Alright, it's time for a clap. Uh, hello everyone, welcome to the 16th of August 2021. My name is Bandau and welcome to the stream today. Uh, you may know me as the guy who has never had an issue with games for Windows Live. Uh, maybe? I don't know. Uh, I got a reasonably exciting stream today. Uh, where I will continue doing the same thing I've done for the past six, seven, six streams. I've forgotten what day I'm up to. I think it's, it's day seven. Uh, so how about let's just jump right into the stream. There we go. Uh, so from what I remember from the last, uh, stream of Pokemon, uh, I defeated, uh, Jasmine in a reasonably alright way. Uh, continued on. Hey, what's up Joshua, how's it going? Um, and uh, now I am ready to take on the ice gym, but I'm concerned that I'm not at all coming in with the right Pokemon at all. And this is actually going to be a bit of an interesting one, because yeah, this is the ice gym, but it's also like 50% the water gym. And that's going to put me in a weird spot because half of them I'm gonna want no one no half of them I'm gonna want hot doggo to melt them and half of them I'm gonna want a uh, fluffer to go at him oh have a go this ice gym is very typical ice gym from Pokemon standards but I guess there's no um like this is kind of a new thing so the gimmick of the gym is that you slide around and have no idea where you're going but it's not that big a gym Roxanne She's got a Jinx. Uh, Jinx is your typical ice type that knows psychic attacks, as all of them do. Uh, also, this is purple face Jinx. Jinx is not black in this game. This is well after the anime, uh, where apparently Jinx cannot be uh, helping Santa anymore. Uh, everyone knows Double Slap always hits five times. That's just the rule of the trade. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's a, uh, it's been a bit of a interesting week in, uh, in, uh, Sydney land, but that's okay because, you know, things will continue on in some way and, uh, life continues going on. But you know what's kind of exciting? There's a Pokemon stream in like two days and I don't know a thing about it. I know people are hyping about it. Gonna look up what are some dot points of that, but this is the real Pokemon stream. You guys are watching right now. You don't have to watch that new announcements that may or may not include the new Pokemon. Um, I don't even know. August 18. That's the the day of the the thing. Um, 8 a.m. Central Time. So that's gonna be basically this time in two days. What's this person just standing down here? Check out my parallel turn! Um... So yeah, I think there's rumors that Serebi is posting around, but I think, uh... This is most likely going to be, uh, something to... Hype up the Diamond Pearl remakes. Um... Uh, my opinions on it have not changed since, uh... Like, when they showed it off, and that is like... It seems like it, they've outsourced the work of making this remake, um, and it does show because it looks too incredibly fa uh, faithful for my likings. I kind of like the Pokemon games being reimagined in some way. I know people don't like them being, you know, changed too much, and honestly, uh, Heart Gold is probably the perfect example. This is not going particularly smoothly for Fluffer at all. Hmm. Uh... This puts me in a bit of a weird spot because Babat is going to be weak to a nice attack, Chicky's weak to a nice attack, Hot Doggo's weak to a water attack, and No One Boy is just going to exist. I guess No One Boy can use Slam. Am I going to rely on that? Because I can't get both. Well, I definitely know I can't get, um. I feel like No One Boy is just going to be my uh, go to. And, uh, yeah, I hate rest. I hate it. No, I knew I couldn't hit every single time. I guess I could maybe spam Tail Whip and just, like, buy myself some time, but... 
I know this gym is going to be a bit of a trouble for me. This has a lot of trainers, this gym as well. It's got five trainers. Uh, more than the last one, which had zero. Rest goes... Exactly! And he's got Aurora Beam, which is not Hyper Beam. It's just... it just looks the same. And because he's faster, what's the odds he's about to rest? I'll give you guys three seconds to think of it, and go... Boom. I'm a psychic right there. Thanks for the follow, Pedikin. Yeah, hello again, Mr. Crip. How's it going? I legitimately think I'm not going to win unless I, like, tail with him. I could use Amnesia. Nah. Just commit. Just commit. Wow, this is... Alright, the headbutt is going to throw me off. And I bet you he's going to... I could have actually won it by now. Instead I decided to go gutsy and go, nah, I'm gonna tail it. Okay, I think he's just, he's just done. He's like, nah, this battle's gone on for too long. Oh no, this battle's gone on for too long. I'm faster than him now. Okay, I'm genuinely confused. Uh, but yeah, I'm... I'm curious how this remake of the 4th gen Pokemon is going to be. Um, I don't want this whole stream to just be full of me talking about Pokemon topics. You know, I've got the Munchax in the bottom left, I'm playing Pokemon. Uh, how much rest he is? I think he only used it twice. It was either twice or three times, I was not paying that much attention, but uh, it definitely, like, he didn't, uh, like, double use it up as well. Um, so, he definitely had PP for it, he just gave up at some point. Just called it a day. Uh... I think this guy has a... This guy's a water-type guy. Three of the, the trainers are water-typers. And also the... The gym leader is mostly a water-typer, so... Yeah, 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 this guy's, yeah. So this guy's only got Seal and also a Dugong, but not as high level a Dugong, so... That's okay. Fortunately, these gym leaders, sorry, these gym trainers, uh, do set you up quite nicely. So, uh, you're not gonna be as caught out. Um, but they definitely do, they definitely do want you to be around, you know, mid-twenties, high-twenties even. The juice is definitely getting there. I might be able to start using him. Can I use him, actually? That'd be an interesting go. Because, yeah, I, I've been boosting him up this whole time, because I'm like, you know, I got him at the end of, not the last stream, but the stream before, and now it's just like, you know, trying to get him to a decent level. And he might be able to just, like, be able to be thrown into the... Although, I, I guess he doesn't have his strat. Uh, and he's weak to water, which is going to put him in a bit of a weird spot in this gym as well. I think he'll be fine afterwards. I'll be excellent, but until then, who knows. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I don't know what to expect about the new Pokemon remake. Uh, there's the Arceus game, um, which looks promising. That's all I can say, because I remember thinking Sword and Shield looked promising at some point, and then... Um, not to say that the trees... They're very fond of Sealed. Yeah, they got a lot of them in this gym. Like, one guy's got a Dugong, this guy's got two Seals and a Dugong. Uh, I know the gym leader's got another Seal and a Dugong. I think I can win this one. This looks like I can do three hits. He doesn't seem to use rest on the turn, he gets out of rest as well. Oh, actually, no, sorry. <laughs> I've, got, I've got an extra turn, it's all easy. I would like Fluff to get as much experience as possible, because I know Fluff is just not going to have a good time afterwards, but... 
trying to look cotton spore cotton spore very interesting choice um nah nah I don't, I don't think cotton spore is a healthy place uh, do you have a fishing team I haven't watched your stream since the victory over three gyms uh, I I've got um quagsire as my water type um, so my team right now is uh, Bayleaf, uh, Flappy, uh, Growlithe, um, Quagsire, Crobat. Sorry, it's still, he's still Golbat and uh, Shuckle. And the Shuckle's a bit underleveled right now. So yeah, Golbat puts puts me in a bit of a weird spot because I can't use like, fly, and, well, really any flying type attack. Uh, but, yeah, like, I don't have a particularly great team against, like, this ice-water combination that keeps going on in this gym. Um, I get to selectively use Growlithe or, um, or, uh, Flaffy, but I don't really have any better choice outside of that. Shelda is my man, though. I wish I'd, like, not I wish I used Shelda, because I kind of do like using these second gens. Um, we'll get that with Golbat, but, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of, like, great first gens still in this game. <laughs> Quagsire is delicious. Oh my gosh. I mean, he is, he probably does look delicious. A very fatty fish. It's like eel, you know? Eel is, like, delightfully tasty, and I don't want to have a lot of it because it's, you know, it's very, very, very too tasty. Ground is tasty. I mean, you can have, like, tasty ground types. Sandshore, I'd imagine, would be, like, okay for a tougher meat. This cloister is not... Oh, I guess he's a physical wall, so... <laughs> Can't do anything about me. He protect... This is a very, like, understated Cloister as well, like, Cloister is something that should destroy, like, absolutely sweep, and if anything, probably should be using a Cloister instead of a seal, and then... Instead he just kind of goes in, the taste of food. Like, ground food. I guess, like, a vegetable is a ground food. He'll tell you a secret, the secret behind Price's power. He meditates under a waterfall daily to strengthen his mind and body. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, so I'm gonna imagine Hot Doggo needs a little bit of heat. Uh, let's go in. <laughs> let's get him. This gym has a slippery floor. It's fun, isn't it? But hey, we're not playing games here. Oh, cool, I guess. Brad! So he's got a swine up. Swine Up is Ice Ground, I believe. So, all I gotta do is use Fire, and he'll just use Endure, and sure, okay. Well, that Endure did get in there. I guess I could just use Bite, can't I? Yeah. I don't think Hot Dog is gonna level up, but a little bit more experience is always good. So this will at least mean that the team is reasonably even level. But this is going to lead to a bit of an interesting gym fight, because I know I'm going to be, like, remarkably out-leveled. Was that two crits in a row? Well, it wasn't in a row, I used Bite in the middle, but... Yeah, okay. Ah, uh, what other Pokemon games I got? Pokemon Sleep? I'm still waiting on that one. Uh, I'm thinking probably put Fluffer up front, but... I'm gonna be curious how this one goes. This gym has one advantage, and that is that despite them having a water or two water type Pokemon, uh, none of Price's Pokemon have an I or have a water attack. So I guess Quagsire is actually safe <laughs> in this whole thing. Um, imagine Waiter brought you fish and said it's half made of the ground. Isn't that just like a green, like, curry?
or a mud cake. Mud cakes made legitimately out of ground. What's the part of like, people don't like eating ground of course, but like, what's the part that people absolutely hate about it? Is it the the fact that like, I'm gonna do this puzzle every time, Pokemon have many experiences in their lives just like we do. I too have seen and suffered much in my life. Bro, join the club. Since I am your elder, let me show you what I mean. I have been with Pokemon since before you were born. I do not lose easily. I prize the Winter Trainer shall demonstrate my power. Now I've lost my appetite before lunch. Ah, someone who is not in the Australian time zone. Da 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 da. I did it. You're right. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so yeah, so he starts off with this seal. It's level 27. It's not too bad, but it does know headbutt, icy wind, aurora bream, and rest. Um, I guess that isn't too bad. Uh, Aurora Beam, I believe it's 90 accuracy off the top of my head. Oh, it is 100 accuracy. Uh, oh, but it's only 65 power. It's not the absolute strongest. I thought it was a lot stronger, um, but I might be thinking Ice Beam. Uh, it has... Uh, it also doesn't freeze, but it does have a 10% chance of lowering your attack stage. So that can be a bit rough. Fortunately, I guess both of my attackers are not going to be relying on uh, the physical stat. In Hot Russia, either you eat food or food eats you. Hot Russia. Oh my gosh. I didn't... I, oh, I wasn't paying attention. I didn't even see him just send out Pillars Wine. Um, I guess I could send out Hot Doggo. Uh, so Pillars Wine here is level 31. He knows Blizzard. That was a good catch, by the way. Like, that is gonna hurt. That is gonna hurt more because it's a crit, but sure. Um, he knows, yeah, Blizzard. He also knows Mist, Icy Wind, and Fury Attack, so as long as the Blizzard isn't the thing he keeps spamming, like that. In Cold Russia, you don't hit at all, yeah. Well, Hot Doggo had a, a good run with, with one attack. Uh, that's okay, I've got some fallbacks. Uh, I've got Chicky. Now, Chicky is weak to Ice, so... I can definitely go in for a quick, like, first attack with Razor Leaf, which should... I think this is gonna 50-50 his... Oh no, okay. I get he's Ground-type, so I guess maybe I should have just relied on that. Okay. <laughs> Didn't even send Chicky out, and there he goes, just getting all the experience. And then, uh, he's got Dugong. I'm just gonna go in with it. Why not? So... Uh, Jugong here has the exact same moveset as the Seal. He's level 29 and he's Jugong, so he's gonna be stronger, but... He does know Aurora Beam still, so that's gonna be a bit of an oof, because Chucky is weak to ice. So many people on my team are weak to ice. Um, but that's not too bad. That actually wasn't as bad as I was expecting. Um, but it was... Oh, wait, I called it too soon. I called it too soon. Well, Chicky, you don't get it. The Mammoth ate the dog. Damn nature in 21 is strange. It is true. Uh, that's okay, because I've got Babat, and I know Babat's going to outspeed. So, that's cool. And also Babat needs experience, I guess. Everyone really needs experience. But the Juicer is now level 26. You're seeing juice the Juicer's stats there, and you're going, Oh, what's going on there? With your strong will, I know you will overcome all life's obstacles. You are worthy of this badge! And he gives you the Glacier badge. This increases um, the special stats of your Pokemon. There you go. Both of them at the same time, which is actually kind of crazy. And then it also lets you use Whirlpool to get across them. Whirlpools, yeah, sure. And this is the gift for me. And he gives you TM16, which is Icy Wind, the one attack he did not use, ever. This is a decent attack. And yeah, that was that gym. I actually thought it was going to go a lot, like, a bit worse, but sure. Uh, you step outside and... Fando, how are things going? I called because something weird is happening with the radio broadcast. They were talking about Team Rocket. Fando, do you know anything about it? Maybe Team Rocket has returned. No, that just can't be true. Sorry to bug you. Take care. Bit late to the memo, bro. Like... But sure. Okay, so... 
Let's heal up and let's uh, investigate this bizarre broadcast. Uh, but yeah, this is actually... I appreciate that the game continues on without needing to... Um... Oh, I, I used it on my transfer Pokemon Red Slowbro. Oh, Icy Wind. Oh. <laughs> it's a pretty good move. I like it. Uh, I gotta put someone away for the moment just to... Oh, I guess I can just put that bat away and then just fly over. Because I still can't... I still can't get someone to fly. Uh, so you're gonna be Flashfly. Come over, Flashfly. Uh, but yeah, this is actually gonna be an interesting, uh, part, because it's gonna be a lot of, like, this as a dungeon. And that's before traveling east to get to, um... To get to the next city. Like, yeah, the next city's over there, but... You got this in Goldenrod that you gotta deal with. And I believe the, there's still the guys selling Slowpoke Tails at the front. Or, or Rage Candy Bars, I believe. Stopping you from continuing on. So, you can't continue on just yet, but you can... Uh... My, my brain's going numb. Uh... But this is kind of fun. This, this is something that I feel like people... Forget about that. The game does indeed have these moments where you do have to, you know, stop and do a dungeon. Or something a bit different and interesting. Lots of trainers. Uh, so that leaves time to open up and, well, also you'll notice that you can't go into something Pokemon. They're nothing more than tools for making money! Oh, sorry, the Pokemon company just wrote that line. Sorry. My bad. Take over the radio tower. What? It's none of your business. So you come in here, and you're gonna have to deal with this music. Hello, I'm sorry, but we're not offering any tours today. Uh, who is at my front, first of all? Fluffer. Ooh. Who do I commit being up to the front? Pokemon Gold and Silver has been released in Korea, but not Crystal. Oh, did they not release Crystal in Korea? Hmm. I'm always confused about, like, releasing games in Korea, because I would imagine it's not... Everyone gets to experience the true terror of Team Rocket, which I was scared of. I wouldn't imagine, like, Korea is that weird beyond translation. Um... But yeah, like, there's a lot of things that do come out late over there, I do know. Um... It's just, yeah, like... It's weird that then, like, you know, they would translate the... The regular versions of these games, and then not do Crystal, and I'd imagine it would be a big hit over there. I'd imagine the Korean market should be very similar to Japan's. Minus a bit of a reliance on uh, those MMOs. I do know that they're very big on MMOs. It has been released in 2002. Uh, oh, did they release it in the end? I like how Bad is not able to take this, like, Raticate. I, I can't do it on my own, wow. Well, we're sending out the Juicer, his electoral debut. So, the Juicer is hilarious because note how strong Hyper Fang was and how little damage that did. And then, you just get him with the old-fashioned rap. Oh, scary face. Oh no, I'm slower. Like, Golden Silver has been released in 2002. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's, it, it came out, like, really late. I actually, I half want to use the juicer, because he double ups his experience like that, he sort of bug off twice. I do want to like, just showcase, and this is why I'm not using the juicer right now. Um, because, like, his strat, it does involve... ...being an absolute, well... I was gonna say being a Chad. But like, yeah, his defense is so absurdly high. Both his defense and his special defense, so it doesn't matter what you're hitting him with. The only problem is his attack sucks. So, the obvious strat for the juicer is to give him toxic. Or something to stall tactic with. Uh, but yeah, I can't do that just yet. Um, oh, and bonus points. Uh, he only learns two more moves, and we'll find those moves as I dedicate to using him. Um, uh, that will be level 28 he'll learn Bide, which is not... I don't think it's particularly, uh... Amazing, because it's like... 
it's double the damage that got dealt to you, but because he's got so low health, it's not really gonna mean anything. They skipped Gen 3. They skipped Gen 3? Ah, Gen 3 was the best one, according to some people who really like Gen 3. But I like Gen 2, so... Um, and then, uh, at level 37, the Juicer will learn Rest, and I will be using that, because that is such a joke move. Just commit, you give him Rest. Um, the other moves, I could teach him Rollout, that would be alright, actually. Um, that'd be alright. I think a classic strat is to use Toxic. But I feel like Rollout would be okay, just because, like, you're gonna constantly be, like, dedicating yourself into a moveset, so, why not? So, that sounds alright. And then, uh, yeah, Rap. Rap's an okay move, but... I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't want to sit through this kind of attacking the whole time. Um, but rollout is also the only move that's gonna be a stab move on them, like, despite being Bug Rock. There's no other bug attacks, and the only other rock attack is Sandstorm, which doesn't really count. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking definitely Toxic, definitely Rollout. But I'm... I guess the thing is that, like, Toxic is, is gonna come very late. So I guess it's that. You can just do Earthquake, which is a classic. In fact, you can get Earth... No, you can't get Earthquake now. Oh, you can only get one Earthquake as well. Ooh. Now I'm gonna have to toss that one up. Figure out what to teach. Well, at the very least, I'm amazed that the Juicer pulled it through. The moment when you never finish Gen 4 game because your Pearl save file was being corrupted with the SD card. Corrupted with the SD card. What'd you play it on? Unless you played it on, like, an R4 or something. In which case, yeah, it, it sucks having, like, a save file just, like, burn like that. Honestly, like, if I had a game do that- oh, Twilight Mini? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, if I had a game, like, do that on me, like, so late into the game, I would legit just, like, put it down and just, like, not go back to it for a long time. I might go back to it eventually, um, but, like, I can't remember the last time that I did have a game, like, absolutely do that to me on. I guess I technically did it with this game, like, an hour and a half in, but I had the benefit of, you know, being able to, you know, have a fast-forward button. Uh, I am not going to be using Shuckle, uh, for... Uh, Every fight, by the way. I'm gonna keep him on the back burner here. Um, seven bad. Oh, that's pain. That is pain. Yeah. None of the Pokemons are, like, that horrendously long, but I guess compared to a lot of other games, yeah, they are horrendously long. <laughs> Hi there. Why would they want to take over the radio tower? So, other than that, uh, this is gonna be a fair bit of fighting. Um, keep me amused. There's gonna be a lot of trainers leading up to the top, but that's okay. Pogos. Um, yeah, I, I can't recall, like, a game where I have had it die on me like that. Um, I've definitely got a few games where it's like I've lost a save file after I have stopped playing it. Um, I, I, I mentioned that, um, uh, in an attempt at the, yeah, at the beginning of this to continue on that save, uh, after the first stream, I lost every single one of these emulator saves, and that included some of my prized ones, like my darn 100% Metropolis Street Racer save. Uh, I've got the, you know, the screenshot proof that I did play it, but, uh, it does suck that it's like, well, if I want to show someone the meme vehicles at the end of the game, you're gonna have to take my word on it. Um, but I guess it's also like, you know, saves are probably reproducible, um, to some extent, uh, because a lot of games, like, they don't take up too much storage space. In theory, you could maybe figure out how the game is laid out internally, uh, and just, you know, figure it out. I would like to know how people do that, um, because I know a lot of people have made, like, save tools for... Um, some things, like, uh, I remember playing Dragon Quest IX, and, like, 
I wouldn't imagine save editors on the DS are that popular outside of Pokemon, but like there's one, and it's just like everything, like literally every single variable, they have figured it out, they have like, it's just crazy. I think I've already got 15 save files from Gen 1 and 3, and only one unfinished diamond and one white. Yeah, definitely, I mean like, that's the other thing as well, is that like, you know, uh, an opportunity lost, an opportunity gained, it's like you can always, you know, find something, uh, well, you know, you can always play the game again in a different way or learn something different on a new playthrough. Uh, that will be my argument in court on, uh, why, uh, why I'm allowed to stream Earthbound to, to Twitch, but... But, uh, like, there's, a hundred percent, there's merit in, like, playing a game again, maybe at various points of time. I actually, I would like to find a game to replay as well, because I'm currently working through, um, I'm at the very, very late stages of Nino Kuni. I actually, I power, like, played it over the past week, and I, um, basically went from, like, 25 hours to finishing the game to almost being done with the post-game. I've got, like, two achievements to go. Uh, good news, I put it, my whole team on card so I can recreate it. Ah, that's good. I think this is gonna happen on Gen 4 Remake. Uh, oh, you're putting your team on your Gen 4 Remake. Nice. I don't know who I would actually, like, play with on, on the Remake. The trouble with these Rattatars is that it doesn't matter that, like, not only are they lower level, it's also the fact that they're Rattatar means that they're just gonna give less experience. Which means it is just more a waste of my time, but sure. That's why the gym leaders appear to give you so much experience, because they've got the good Pokémon with the higher base experience rates. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I power played Nino Kuni, I... I feel like I've got a really good understanding of like how all the mechanics work now, um, and so I kind of take back like... It, it wasn't a bit of a weird spot, the part where I did complain about the game was also the hardest part of the game for me. I did not have trouble with the game afterwards. You've got to be kidding. I'm trying to get his, you know, his friendship up. He's tanking all these hits, 10 damage at a time, and then suddenly there's one Radita. Nah, I'm gonna do 30. Why do I bother, you know? Why do I bother? You, you like how Fluffer, like, joined in on the beat then, by the way? Because this cry was like, Dee -dee! So That's the song. Go back. Legit, if you're, if, if, sorry, if you're on YouTube and you're hearing this, just like hit left like five times, just like listen to that again and go like, ah, oh, it's genius. Uh, I'm going back for another heal. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I complained, I, I, I did kind of complain about just like how I didn't understand how all these mechanics work, um, in Nino Kuni, and then, yeah, afterwards just everything kind of seemed like a bit of a cakewalk, it started settling in. I think at that point in the game they had taught all the mechanics, uh, so they do, they do start to settle in, you do start to understand what the, the all-in offense and the all-in, uh, defense, uh, really mean, um, I'm still at this weird point where, like, the AI does do dumb things. I can't get them to, like, engage in the enemy, and I also can't get them to not just abuse their magic points so well. Like, if I'm playing as, uh, Swain, they're gonna abuse their magic points, Oliver and Esther. They're just, they're just spamming it, and then, yeah, I'm doing these Coliseum things at the end game, and it's like, yeah, I can't... I don't know how to, like, survive as, uh you know, as myself, because the AI will burn all their magic by the second fight. Uh, Infernape, Staraptor, Miss Magus, Pachirisu, Gastrodon Pink, and Obama Snow. I know, I call them Obama Snow all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good team. Well-rounded, yeah. If there's one thing that 4 Pokemon does, it makes you think that you've made, like, a great choice with every single one of your Pokemon, because every- uh, so many of them have, like, great, like, top forms. Funny number health. Hello, Bob. How's it going? No, I did not. Also, hi. Hello. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah no, I... Yeah, Nino Kuni started to get easier after I understood how everything worked. Um, I started to get, uh, call me Zero. Okay, Zero. Uh, yeah, I, I, it just started to iron out. Um, but I also felt that the game started getting quicker. Like, it, there was a point in the game where there was a great, like, small story in Hamelin, and it was a really well-isolated part of the story. Um, and I was like, it reminded me so much of Dragon Quest, and, like, very, you know, well-paced part. Uh, all hail Lord Piplap. Piplap. You gotta, you gotta hail him. Um, but yeah, that part didn't really happen in the rest of the game, and I was a little disappointed that, uh, the, the game continued on without really that tight piece of story. There were a lot of other stories where I was like, and in fact, the rest of the game afterwards kind of was like, we need to do thing, let's do that. Oh, but in order to do that, we need to do this. Oh, but in order to do that, we need to do that. And it continued on, it was like, man, like, it would be great if I knew that step, like, eight had to happen. But instead, it's like I only knew about step eight because step seven requires, like, they, the problem doesn't get solved. Sorry, as, like, you don't have... The story doesn't describe the steps needed in order for the characters to reach the end point. Instead, it's like they take an attempt at one step, it doesn't work, and then they invent a bit of, like, lore or something to kind of make the next bit happen. At, or, so, in a lot of the time, something MacGuffins into the player. Like, just something is accessible to the... to Oliver, and suddenly he's now able to do a thing. And that got a bit irritating. Um, uh, I think in Silver they redraw Gen 1 Scythe Sprite. Oh, they redraw everything Sprite in Gen 2. They're so much better looking in Gen 2 because of that. Um, yeah, uh, if I had to continue complaining about Nino Kuni, I feel like the, uh, the fake out ending was, like, incredibly appropriate of an ending, and then they continued, like, because the only thing that they had, um, Oh no, they didn't redraw the sprites? I'm pretty sure every sprite in this game is redrawn from... first gen. Unless you mean something else, I'm not too sure. Muck! <laughs> spell muck backwards, ha 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 ha. I mean, they copied Scyther and redrew it. I'm looking up the sprites now, so I'm just gonna... <laughs> Because I'm fairly certain every single one of these sprites does not look like what they do in first gen. Uh, sprites. Yeah, no, every, all those sprites are different. All those sprites are different. Gold and silver, they are very different from the, the red and yellow sprites. Although I will say Scyther probably had one of the most faithful sprites from first gen. But, like, his head is a different size in, like, all of those shots. It's, it's a bit of a different pose in both of the games. Or rather, in all, uh, four, I guess, because all the sprites got redrawn for Pokemon Yellow. And then, I still have no idea why they decided to do this, but Gold and Silver both have different sprites. Um, they never did it again for any Pokemon game. Uh, it, within generation, so uh, Ruby Sapphire would have the same sprites, Diamond Pearl would have the same sprites. Sometimes Emerald would change it up a little bit, and they had the animated parts. Fire Red had different sprites, yeah. Um, Heart Gold has different sprites uh, to uh, Diamond Pearl, Platinum, but shared it for interest. Um, no, but what I mean is that, like, R Gold Silver are the only, like, intergenerational games where the sprites are different um and otherwise every single sprite has like is generally redrawn i think a lot of like um like diamond pearl i do know a lot of the sprites do look very very similar so i think they are kind of redrawn within a very similar manner not scyther in this case but, but yeah
And I chose the best one for Crystal. Uh, the Silver Sprite? Yeah. Yeah. I've been given strict orders. I'm to crush anyone who challenges Team Rocket. That's what this guy sounds like, apparently. Well, as long as he doesn't start off with a coughing, I'm okay. Done. <laughs> nah, that's fine. Um, so here comes Babat. He still does not have his friendship all the way up, but we'll get there. We will get there. Uh, but yeah, no, I, other than that though, like, as much as I'll rip on Nino Kuni, I did kind of enjoy it. I think it's got good pacing, um, or, sorry, not good pacing, but I do appreciate that, like, it doesn't try to waste my time. It is pretty, um, pretty appropriately length. It doesn't, um, it still looks good and runs well as a PC version, and I think the, the charm of the game is still pretty good. It, it's got its quirks. I'm still very confused about, like, IGN giving it, um, like, a ridiculously high score, like a 9.4, I think. And I'm like, what? Uh, I'm gonna look it up on Metacritic. I know it's not, like, a, you know, be-all, end-all, like, oh, it's got 85 on Metacritic, it must be an amazing game. But, it, like, I remember seeing, yeah, 9.4 from IGN. Uh, game trailers, 9.3, uh... Like, I mean, there's a few other publications I've never heard of, but like, what's another site that I have heard of? GameSpot, 9.0 out of 10. Uh, EGM, 9.0 out of 10. Destructoid, 9 out of 10. It's like, it got really universally liked. Um, and I'm like, I, I, I'm often a bit harsher in my ratings, but I do feel like Nino Kuni is a tougher recommendation than what people or what critics have given it. It's still a great game, but... I don't know. When your grandma possessed your Pokemon game, and now random dude have her voice now? I'm... You gotta tell your grandma to stop possessing your video games. That sounds really, really uncomfortable to have your grandma constantly in your video games. Like... Who would I want to possess my video game? I meant your game. Oh, my Pokemon game. No, 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 my grandma has not possessed my... Uh, my grandma's still alive. But like... <laughs> well... May maybe she's like astral projecting. And Babat has... Whoa, he's kind of fine, I'm not getting in that fight. Um... I, I don't know why, my brain was thinking, oh, like, wouldn't it be funny if, like, Margaret Thatcher, like, possessed my Pokemon game? That'd be... That'd be a weird one. She would yell at me every time I'd buy 50 revives. I don't know where this is going, honestly. <laughs> but... Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, if I was glancing past all these blurbs on, um... On, uh... Like, on Bulbapedia. Bulbapedia? I, pff, my brain! It's absolutely mush. Creepypasta, not the same anymore. Dude, okay, I've never been one to, like, get, like, too soaked up into creepy bosses. Like, I'd read them and i go, like, there's either, like, too much blood, or person just doesn't, like, you know, like, you know, just become superstitious about something, or, uh, like, just things don't operate the, the same. I, I haven't read too many creepy bosses. I guess there's that, but I remember there was one that, like, was really praised, and it was, like, I think it was like a person's brother got possessed like after they played a game or something like that. Um, and uh, they would like describe like the weird things that would happen in the game and then they would notice those weird things happening like within their brother's like room or something afterwards. And that wheezing is wheezin't. 
good thing no one boy is a very bulky boy. So. Also, thanks Google for eavesdropping on what the streamer is talking about and pushing it to me in the search. Oh, are you searching about the one with the brother? Yeah, I, I don't know what it's called. It's been forever since I looked it up. Um, but yeah, I'm just like... They'd be scary if the writing was better. There's so many creepy classes where it's like, I can I can see the, the, like, the spookiness of how it works, but the writing is very stilted. Um, like, a lot of short sentences, or like, this is not how someone talks, or alternatively, this is not how, like, a narrator would describe something. It's like, they're often in, like, first person. Um, and so I feel like it's like, yeah, I mean, It'd be great to, to uh, have a have a more formal writer just like turn these into like some short stories or something. Um, but I like that that's just a general statement. There may be actual examples out there where I'm like, holy crap, that that's amazingly well written. But you know what I mean? Like, I I think like Sonic EXE is a classic, and I'm I'm actually gonna try and pull it up on my end. Um. Because I remember... Uh... Yeah, can I get the... Just just the writing, not like an actual, like... Executable. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Don't describe the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so like... I start this off. I'm, I'm actually gonna read out... Uh... At least the beginning of this. I think, I think the beginning of this is probably gonna like set it up. Zero days since Sonic EXE mentioned. It's Sonic EXE, like the one that everyone always brings up. Is that as like a spooky? Uh, it's definitely long. I'm not gonna be able to read all of this out on stream. It's that is quite long. Um, but like, if I start off by like reading it. I, it just goes, I'm a total Sonic the Hedgehog fan, much like everyone else. I like the newer games, but I don't mind playing the classics. I don't think I've ever played any glitchy or... Sorry, I don't think I've ever played glitchy or hacked games before, though I don't think I want to play any after the experience I had. Cue a laugh track right there. No, but I just have my record of four days. Sonic Boom! Uh, it started on a nice summer afternoon. I was playing Sonic Unleashed. I liked how you get to explore the towns in it, until I noticed, out of my peripheral vision, that the mailman had arrived and put something in my mailbox as usual and left. I paused my game to go see what I got in the mail. The only thing in the mailbox was a CD case for computers and a note. I took it inside. I looked at the note first and realized it was from my dear friend Kyle, let's just call him that, whom I hadn't heard from in two weeks. I know that because I recognized his handwriting, though what was weird was how it, is how it looked. It looked very badly written and scratchy and somewhat difficult to read. Uh, as if Kyle was having a hard time writing it down and did it in a hurry. Uh, like, before I get into the letter part, like, I just go like, man, so many of those sentences, you know, start with I, uh, like, it started on a nice summer afternoon, it's like... There's... I don't really know anything about this person, I don't know their name, I just know that they enjoy Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, they apparently have not played any glitchy games, which just seems like... Uh, a weird one to me. Uh, or hacked games, maybe, sure, but... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and then, uh... Like, them saying that they're a Sonic the Hedgehog fan, and they're playing Sonic the Hedgehog the very second that someone, you know, mailman put something in their mailbox, and they watched the mailman put something in their mailbox. I don't know, for me, I'm like, I don't, I don't watch my mailman, I check my mail like once a week, and then go, oh, okay, cool, that stuff came in, but, um... Like, I, it, these are just things that, like, jump out at me, where I'm just like, oh, like, I, I could rephrase this, and like, Describe, like, the day, describe the feelings, just kind of like, you know... Without needing to set up, like, an ominous tone. I don't know, so... Anyways, it continues on a little bit, uh, and I'll go, uh, this is what, uh, he wrote. Uh, Tom, I can't take it anymore. I had to get rid of this thing somehow before it was too late, and I was hoping you'd do it for me. I can't do it. He's after me, and if you don't destroy the CD, he'll come after you too. He's too fast for me. 
every Sonic player after the second part. Oh boy, this game is great. Time to play the next one and list Sonic CD. I didn't think Sonic CD was that bad. I really enjoyed Sonic CD. It's good. Um, it's it's short unless you're looking in the right places. It's definitely that with Sonic CD, but it's um, yeah, it's it's good fun. I guess it's not on the same console technically. It's on the the, the CD, but. Uh, nah, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm just talking about metal. Oh, the metal theme. Oh, the, um, yeah, yeah. Is that, like, actually creepy music? I don't know, it just sounds... I, I listen to too much weird music. It's hard to creep me out with music. People get creeped out with, like, the Lavender Town music, and I'm like... Just a freaking chip tune, bro. Don't look too into it. Maybe this comes from, like, the same crowd of people who would, like, imagine that, like, if you played music backwards, it's like a satanic ritual, you know? Maybe it's, like, from that. So, anyways, as, as loud goes on, please, Tom, uh, destroy this godforsaken disc before he comes after you two. It's too late for me. Uh, Silas Speedway would be like, turn it up, yeah. Um, uh... I'll just go with Fluffer on this one. Destroy the disc and you'll destroy him, but do it quick, otherwise he'll catch you. Don't even play the game. It's what he wants. Just destroy it. Please. Kyle. So, I guess this guy kind of noticed his friend's handwriting. Um, I don't know what, when Sonic.exe or Sonic.exe came out. Um, but, I mean, I feel like the like, the spreading of the, the copy pasta, not copy pasta, the creepy pasta, um, kind of implies that this, the internet's out, so his friend's sending him a handwritten note, um, with the letter and not just, like, telling him about it, kind of strikes me as a bit interesting, but, uh, I guess also as well, like, you know, oh, <laughs> I can't do it, he's after me, I can't destroy the disc, but I can 100% mail it to someone who can, and not just... Ask a parent, ask a stranger, uh, chuck it in the garbage. Like, I don't know. It speaks to me as a bit odd, so. Anyways, uh, the, the creepypasta continues a little bit, um. And, and, uh, this is, this is where the classic creepypasta that I know of really, like, s speaks out. Where it's, um, you know, it starts to describe things as just, like, weird or abnormal and then just continues describing things as weird or abnormal, like... I- I'm supposed to be unsettled, but I'm just kind of like... I'm just kind of along for the ride. Um, so he goes, Well that was certainly weird. Even though Kyle is my best friend, and I haven't seen him in two weeks, I didn't do what he asked me. Great friend. I didn't think that a simple gaming disc would do anything bad to him. After all, it's just a game, right? Boy, was I wrong about that. So we've already, like, whoever's written this has done two, like, you know, cue the laugh track, like, end the paragraph with a, like, just, you know, avert whatever <laughs> expectation I just set up kind of thing. Ah, oh, if, if I was a narrator, I wouldn't describe the ending right away. Child, uh, mum, the devil possessed my game. Mum, what made you think so? Game, I'll pull your heart out and eat it. Mum, nah, it's okay. Oh, I... Alright, real talk, like, I, I know my mum, uh, she's not like, she's not ultra conservative Christian. She's not like that kind of like, you know, I can't play violent games, but she definitely was like, you know, lean towards the age rating. Just be appropriate on that one. Um, so I didn't, like, I didn't play any M games until I was like, I think 12. I think Metro Prime was the first one. Um, I, I had a mate who did have, like, San Andreas, and I did remember playing that, like, when I was, like, 11. Um, but I didn't play it all the way through. I knew it had its its uh, bits there, like you know, o obvious obvious language and themes and all that stuff that probably would go over the head of a lot of children. Uh, try attack is a fun normal type attack. Don't be confused by the animation. It's just normal type. Uh, every moment, creepy plus a story, which I'd be like, yeah, exactly. Although, granted, the kid is is totally making this up, isn't he? Dragon Tide. Ah. Oh. 
What's my strat? I guess we'll go with Babat. So, conversion 2 only changes uh, Porygon's type, so him being Dragon type means it's not going to be an issue for anything else. Porygon is a bit of a... Oh! No one ever preps themselves to get frozen. Well, great use of me being frozen. This is already at the level of Five Nights at Freddy's SL. Uh, I'm not aware of that one. Uh, so, to continue on, he goes, Anyway, I looked at the disc, and it looks like any other ordinary c computer CDR disc. Uh, except it had a black marker on it written Sonic.exe. And it was much, uh, it was much unlike Kyle's handwriting, meaning that he must have gotten it from someone else, like a pawn shop or eBay. When I saw Sonic on the writing of the CD, I was actually excited and wanted to play it, since I'm a big Sonic fan. I went up to my room and turned on my computer and put the disc in and installed the game. When the title screen popped up, I noticed that it was the first Sonic game. I was like, awesome, because like I said earlier, I liked the classics. The first thing I noticed that was out of place was when I pressed start, there was a split second when I saw the title image turned into something much different, something that I now consider horrifying before cutting to black. I remember what the image looks like in that split second before the game cut to black. The sky had darkened, the title emblem was rusted and ruined, the Sega 1991 was now Sega 666, and the water had turned red like blood, except it looked hyper-realistic. And I'm like, alright, I get to that part, and I'm like, okay, bro, first of all, you're a real dumb kid for chucking a randomly mailed CD to you. Like, yeah, it's from your friend, but... Do you try- it would be funnier if it was Force. Maybe. But it's like, this kid, he just puts the CD into his computer, goes through an installer, like, what is the installer like? It's just... It just happens, that's it. No, no need to... Don't, don't point at it too much. And then, in a split second, and you use split second twice, I was beaten. I'm gonna heal, by the way, my team is absolutely knackered. Um, but in a split second, he notices the, uh, like, like, the blood is probably one... Maybe you'll notice this, like, the... The sky darken and the template, the, sorry, the title emblem ruined. I would not catch the Sega 666. That's that's a bit, you know, a bit too much of a catch. Uh, I guess also as well, um, is this just an emulator? Like, why do you install stuff if it's Sonic the Hedgehog? Like, I don't know. We could just consider it a spooky game. Double setup 666. Please press button next so we can download double. Hey, this is an installed wizard, not an installed devil. Uh, I also love how the kid is incredibly oblivious to virus checking or really anything involved with this game because he just likes the classic Sonics. Um, this is one as well that I kind of don't understand. Like, I, I've at least played like the first like, well, I guess really all of them at this point. And uh, I feel like Sonic 1 is in its own kind of camp in terms of quality. And I'm curious how many people, like, they'll like Sonic 1 because it's the classic. Uh, whereas I'm just kind of like, I don't know, man. I, I wouldn't really want to play Sonic 1 as much as I'd replay the other ones. <laughs> it's alright, it's got its bits. Um, you, you who came to rescue me? It sucks. Is that what you were expecting? WRONG! I'm an imposter! Oh, I pretended to be the real thing to prepare for our takeover! Do you want to know where we hid the real director? Sure, I'll tell you, but only if you can beat me. Oh, dude, you said sus like three minutes too early, bro. You knew exactly. Alright, so this is the Rocket Executive. This guy means business. He's got coughing. I realize I don't have a particularly, like, amazing thing to fight this guy. First part is worse than the classics? Yeah, just just specifically Sonic. I feel like uh, there's other games where it's not as much an issue, but definitely Sonic 1 is... It's got its quirks. Um, I think Sonic 3 is especially good at just being like, hey, you know, platformer with very different mechanics in every level. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't work as well as the first Mario does. Like, the first Mario is instant classic. Minimal, but it does the job. Uh, for reference, this guy, I am not even joking, has six... Well, sorry, he's got five coffins that are all level 30, and they range from knowing Smokescreen, Tackle, Sludge, and four of them know Self-Destruct, and one of them knows Smog instead of Self-Destruct. And then there's this one wheezing level 32 here, and it knows Smokescreen, Tackle, Sludge, Explosion. As long as your Pokémon is not weak to Poison, you're generally fine, but he's gonna use Explosion. And you, you got nothing against that one, like... Especially this guy knowing Explosion is like, nah, that, that's a... That's a dumb Pokémon. You can't... You can't get around that. Um... It's not... Too bad? But I guess No On Boy was probably my, like, hardest damage dealer, who's not physical as well. Don't use physical, because... Coughing. Um... So I guess I'm probably gonna rely on Hot Doggo for this fight. And if not... Uh, no, you can't go fast in this game. Blah! Um... Yeah... Sonic 1, like, it's not as fast, and honestly, I think the speed is not uh, its strong suit in the first game. The, the platforming is the, the bread and butter of Sonic, and that's fine, um, but yeah, when, like... Like, I do feel like there's some levels, um, my brain's thinking Spring Yard Zone, where it's like, yeah, sometimes the speed kind of gets in the way. Not Spring Yard. That was another level, and it's like you'd run, like, too fast so much of the time. Well, Hot Doggo's gone. Uh, Buffer, you got this. The nice thing is that I've taken out three of his Pokemon, and he's got- I've got four left, so he can't do anything to me if he keeps spamming that, uh, self-destruct, but it is kind of annoying. I'm not appreciating it at all. This is probably, like, one of the rougher fights that, like, you'd have to do at this point in the game as well, just because it's, like, it's a pretty unrelenting, like, team. Uh... But yeah, well, let's continue, shall we, with this? Uh, but the freakiest thing that was in that split-second frame was Sonic. His eyes were pitch black and bleeding, with two glowing red dots staring right at me and his smile had stretched wider up to the edge of his face. I was rather disturbed about that image when I saw it, though I figured that it was a glitch, and just forgot about it. Archer in this game like Germany in World War I. Oh, dude. Bro, he, he ain't letting up. <laughs> uh, after it cuts to black, it stayed like that for about 10 seconds or so, and then another weird thing happened. The save file select from Sonic the Hedgehog 3 popped up, and I was like, WTF? What's that doing in the first Sonic game? Anyway, then I noticed something off. The background was the dark cloudy sky of the bad Stardust Speedway level from Sonic CD, and there were only three save files. Wasn't there actually one version of um, Sonic 3 that does only have three save files? He really likes gas. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna get demonetized on YouTube just in like a heartbeat right now. Easy. Well, here's the last one. Uh, so, the music was that creepy caverns of winter music from Earthbound. Why is it specifically Earthbound, I guess? Not? Okay, here's actually something as well. Like, Earthbound seems to have, have attracted like a very. Well, maybe not anymore, but like definitely at its time. Like, it got this weird, like. Like, not like DeviantArt, but you know what I mean? Like, I put, um, in one of my stream intros, I did, um, Eric Bound. I, I put that song in there, and I'm like, how does this attract so many, like, vocal and... I'll say creative kids? Not necessarily, uh, talented all the time, but definitely, like, people who do want to put in a lot of effort. We stashed the real director in the underground warehouse. It's at the far end of the underground. But I doubt you'll get that far, and then he gives you a key, for some reason, like... He's just gonna let me get it. Sure. Yeah, that guy is... A bit of a rocky mean fight, but... It's not the worst, like... I mean, it's five coughings and a wheezing, and none of them know, like, any real strong attacks beyond self-destruct, so... As long as you're able to at least, like, deal damage, should be fine for it. Um... 
what you're probably not as fine for is uh, what happens immediately afterwards, uh, which is another boss fight. So that's good fun. Uh, and this is going to be an interesting one for me because this is going to be like the true test of your team. Uh, and you can guess who it's with. Uh, by the way, I love the, the hyper-realistic blood, the, uh, like, yeah, the comment they sent the director to Brazil. Oh, maybe. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, so the music was that creepy caverns of winter music from Earthbound, only it was extended and seemed to have been in reverse, and the image for the save file where you see a preview of the level you're on is just red static for all three files. So, Vietnam can't, oh. Uh, so, what I feel like this kid has probably gotten is that he has, like, he's played Earthbound. He thinks that the red static is creepy, which it is. Yeah, but, like, if it's in other games, ooh. Okay, so, uh, what freaked me out more was the character select. It showed only Tails, Knuckles, and to my surprise, Dr. Robotnik. Now, I was sure that something was up. I mean, how can you play as Robotnik in a classic Sonic game before crying out loud? Then I realized that this wasn't a glitchy game. It was a hacked game. Pokemon? Oh, sorry. This guy's still blocking me. Yeah. Oh, like... Something is hacked? Like... I mean, maybe... Maybe it's a bit naive to me now, but I'm just like... Yeah, like... You're the one installing trash into your computer. Uh, by the way, you get a huge premium if you hadn't fought these guys earlier. Uh, but, head down this corridor, up to the door, and the key works. And we go inside. It's scary when they don't let you know that something is wrong. Oh, but before you fight anyone, and I know you get baited, you think you're gonna fight one guy. Hold it! I saw you, so I tailed you. I don't need you underfoot while I take care of Team Rocket. Wait a second, you beat me before, didn't you? That was just a fluke. But I repay my debts. I love this guy. I love how like he, he he isn't gonna let that down. Even though like legit, you're both fighting for the same cause now. He knows that, but he's not letting that that uh you know that win get to you. Uh, so yeah, here comes your rival. He starts off swinging with a uh, gold bat. Um, I guess it's not a crowbat, so it's okay. He's level 30. He only knows wing attack, confuse ray, and bite. So nothing out of the ordinary, but definitely it's a higher level gold bat. That's gonna get in the way. The Confuse Ray is gonna definitely throw me off, I'll tell you that. But I might be- I might be good at getting this. Uh, I, I'm curious whether I should continue reading the Sonic EXE. But yeah, like... He's the worst from blue. The Golden? Yeah, I guess. Uh... The point is, is that, like, yeah, the, a lot of the the rest of the Sonic EXC is a lot of explanation. Um, the, the kid's narration is not, like, very convincing. It's just, like, he just kind of asks a question out loud. Uh, I did not just pay attention to what he was about to send out, so I'm just going to, like, go in for it and then go, okay, it's Magnemite. Um, yeah, I, I really should have been paying attention. That's okay, I got a hot doggo who's not going to have much use. Oh, he might actually. Oh, it should be okay. Yeah, yeah, so... Point is... Point is... That... That is my gist of Sonic EXE. There's a lot of... Um... Just, yeah, weird description of stuff. Yeah, and... And we all know what's gonna happen. The kid... The kid's unleashed the thing, and... Uh, like an idiot, by the way, he continues playing it. He doesn't stop at any point. It's like Patrick's story. Yeah, like... It, it just confuses me. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to make it out of this one alive. Sorry, just Growlithe, by the way. Well, that's a bit unfortunate. Um... Yeah, I'll just use Fluffer again. Uh, then everyone die the end. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just chuck in the tackle. Ooh, this is gonna take a bit of time. This is gonna take a bit of time getting rid of this Magnemite. Sonic Boom! We got we gotta get a Pog Champ. We gotta, you know, fight this guy. Why is the the Magnemite is actually gonna be like 
the worst thing that I've got to be up against. Cause he's just gonna, he's just gonna spam Sonic Boom and I can't do anything about it because Fluff is too slow bro. And paralyzed. He can miss, but... What's gonna happen? Just, he's just gonna spam Sonic Boom on the next turn. Uh... I'm just gonna see if I can, again, reset the chat. One day I will actually fix the chat. Or just embrace the fact that the chat is gonna go... You know, reverse order, as in the messages come from the bottom instead of the top. One day I'll, I might accept that, but not today. Uh... Let's chuck Babat in. Because I know that a bite's just gonna kill him, so... I think you need an overlay for Pokemon strings? Maybe. I used to do the, the sidebar from the current team bed. Ah, uh, I, I mean, the problem with doing, like, a live overlay is that I've got to, like, keep on top of it. Um, or alternatively have a memory viewer, which is just... It's not going to be good fun. So, uh, uh, for reference, that Magmite used all three attacks. He's got... Well, actually, no, he didn't use Super Sonic. Uh, but he's got Thunder Wave and Sonic Boom, so that was that. Uh, here comes Haunter. He's got Shadow Ball, Curse, and Mean Look. Uh, Curse is going to be a bit mean. But he's going with Mean Look. So, uh, Mean Look prevents me from switching out. Uh, although you can do it between Pokemon still, I believe. So, yeah, that wasn't really a great strat on his end. Uh, so now he's about to use Sneasel. Uh, Sneasel is Dark Ice type, but don't let that uh, get you down because uh, he does not know any ice attacks. Um, I'm going with Chicky on this one. Also, Sneasel is like very brown in this game. Yeah, I like I I appreciate the suggestion of ch chucking overlay, but I. I don't have the means of really doing it that, like, that well during a live, um, presentation, I guess. That, that's my only thing. Um, and, uh, like, I, I feel the, to keep the streams low budget in terms of, like, the time commitment, um, yeah, I, g I generally would just kind of go like, hey, if I can just, like, do it live and keep my commentary alright, sweet. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it. I've got Synthesis. Maybe this is a perfect opportunity to use Synthesis. There we go. Let's just go in for it. He's gonna spam that Faint Attack, because that's the one thing that can deal, like, a significant amount of damage. But, little does he know, I have a cheating move! I thought that was gonna do half my health. I healed one more than the damage he dealt. I can predict the future. <laughs> I swear... I swear that did more... more health. I, I swear you got more health out of... out of Synthesis. I regret... I regret thinking that Synthesis would save me. Oh, like... That's just pain. That's just pain right there. I mean, I don't need Chicky. I don't need Chicky after this, so that's okay. Um, I'm gonna chuck Babat in there. Uh, you're gonna put Flash before Red for this mount? This mount. I mean, I'm not fighting Red for like, another like, 15 hours in this game. So, I don't know man. Uh, the Juicer is gaining way too many levels, so I think I can start to... You know, pull back the experience share on him. Um, let's send Noam Boy out. The classic, if Noam Boy tanked his cool lava last time, but then my English is still on potato level. Yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah. Actually, yeah, like, it's been a long time since we fought the rival. Because that was just before the fourth gym. And now we've done seven. We've gone through two Team Rocket thingies, and now he's back right here at the end. And his Quilava, by the way, still hasn't evolved, and it probably could have at this point. Actually, no, it couldn't. It couldn't. It evolves at level 36. So, um, so yeah. So this thing knows Ember, Smoke Screen, Quick Attack, and Flame Wheel. Uh, 
I guess actually, yeah, if you do, if you have chosen the other two starters, it is a fully evolved starter. But his Quilava has yet to reach the level that it can evolve, so he doesn't get anything out of it. Uh, that being said, his other starters, like, I'm looking at their movesets and I'm going, well, none of those are, like, that scary. They'll have a Feraligator, but, like, Bite, Scary Face, Rage, and Water Gun? It's not too bad. Um, and then there's Meganium, Poison Powder, Synthesis, Body Slam, and Reflect. Body Slam is probably a bit of a meme, but... I've assembled the toughest Pokemon. I didn't ease up on the gas. So this is the gas guy. You think the direct is full of gas? I don't understand. Is that is what that Lance guy said true? That I don't treat Pokemon properly? Love, trust. Are they really what I lack? Are they keeping me from winning? I, I just don't understand. But it's not going to end here. Not now. Not because of this. I won't give up on my dream of becoming the world's best Pokemon trainer. He's got his motivation there, and he has that degree of self-reflection, and that's what makes Silver, like, a great rival character, because he isn't the villain. Yeah, he could have, he could have Feraligate in this battle, um, and, and Meganium. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he definitely, like, I, I really appreciate Silver as a villain, or as a rival, because, like, that's... I mean, that's the whole point, is that he's supposed to be someone who is not just, like, he, he's not just a side protagonist. Because he is, I mean, he did do something evil at the beginning of the game, so... There's that, and obviously he has those, uh... He's like... What's the term? Like, chaotic good? He's not really chaotic, but he's definitely, like, neutral good. He doesn't really care about your plight, but he is kind of like, you know, he's trying to do the best. Or rather, he's trying to just get rid of Team Rocket, like, he, d he doesn't like Team Rocket. Um, but yeah, there's that, so, and then we continue on, we've got a bit more, uh, Team Rocket fighting about to continue on with. I'm actually going to take, uh, the item, experience share off the juicer, and I'm going to put it on Hot Doggo, because I don't think Hot Doggo is going to have as much. Uh, he is the worst from Blue, Blue is just a jerk, yeah, definitely. And that's okay, I mean, like, it's not, I'm not giving it, uh, the benefit of the doubt because the first game I'm giving it, well, there's no doubt as well. I'm, I'm not saying the first game gets away with it because it's simple, but legitimately the first game, like, is very simple, and that's fine. I, that's a tautology, I'm, you know what I mean, it's like, not, not that it's the first Pokemon game, but that I don't expect much out of a Game Boy title, um, so that's fine. Uh, that's why I find, like, this game to be really impressive, because it does leverage, um, like, capabilities of the Game Boy Color and the Super Game Boy. And then Crystal flat out demands it. I don't know why. Um, but, like, this is, like, really, like, peak amount of content for a Game Boy title. Like, this game is incredibly, like, just crammed to the brim with features, um, just, like, dialogue, mechanics, it's just all over the place, and it's done in a really, like, fun way. Um, and it's all within a... I think it's a one megabyte Game Boy cartridge. Um, and I guess that's the fun part, is that, like, yeah, like, NES games, like, you look at Super Mario Brothers, that game fit on a single non-mod, like, without a, a, a chip, uh, a memory controller within the cartridge, that fit on 40 kilobytes of storage. Uh, the fact that this game is 25 times larger than Super Mario Brothers is amazingly, like, fun on a continued 8-bit system. Like, yeah, I, I feel like the Game Boy Color is more powerful than an NES, like, apart from not being able to show the resolution, but it definitely has, um... Like, it's a well-clocking chip, uh, it's got the... The sound font could still be better. No? Is the Game Boy Color not more powerful than a... NES? I think the NES has some horrid, like, sprite limit, like, stuff. There's, there are just some weird limitations. The only thing I guess you could say about this game is that... This came out at the same time the Dreamcast came out. And that... That's a... That's a fun, like, era of time to think about as well. Because it's like... We're in this point where it's like, phone games... Like, yeah, they don't look like console games, but, like, we've got the Switch. We've got this weird, like, happy medium where... There goes another coughing. Um, we've got this weird happy medium where it's, like, game consoles can step back from being, like, bleeding-edge, 
top tier graphics and still look very approachable. Uh, they're just using interesting methods for storing sprites. Um, I don't think it's exclusively this game, though. I think, like, a lot of these late Game Boy games really did have, a, like, a real fun and, like, you know, just cramming a lot of, a lot of data into the game. Like, and, and I, I, I don't think they're doing it purely off, uh, all Game Boy games use that. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I guess the architecture is different between the two systems, but... One sprite uh, for 8x8. I'm pretty sure the NES did that as well. They had the, um, the, the PRG bank, didn't they? And that's got all sprite data, color data, like everything has to be in there. And then PRG is uh, executable program. I'm not too sure how the Game Boy uh, ROMs are laid out. I'd imagine everything is still, you know, mixed between data and uh, code blocks, but... Um... I guess as well, yeah. There probably is, like, some limitation to the, uh, code space, but just memory is so much cheaper as, you know, as time went on. So, they could definitely afford to, you know, use a one megabyte cartridge for this game and not a one megabyte cartridge back in 1985. Maximum is 256 sprites. Is that... That's... That's not for everything. No... That, that must be for one singular bank. Or something, because that seems crazy that you're only allowed 256 sprites in any game. Like, that. I, I might imagine, like, Super Mario Land might try that, but I don't. I wouldn't expect. Um, especially not this game, because the Pokemon sprites are not. Um, they're not 8x8. Eight eight. They're at least, like. That is, like, 32 by 32 Mario Land used less than 100. Yeah, like. Yeah, definitely Mario Land is a smaller title, but I feel like there are definitely a lot of Game Boy games out there that didn't go close to that 256 sprite limit that you're mentioning. That sounds like a 256 sprite limit in memory, um, and not in, in ROM, and that's fine, because as long as the game knows how to switch between those kinds of sprites, and that's fine. Which this game does a great job of, because anyone can send any Pokemon out at you, and the game doesn't have to pause to figure that out. Which, that, like, I guess dynamic loading has always been, um, like, a dream. People have always wanted it, and I guess there's certain places where it's like, yeah, people kind of implemented, like, not necessarily dynamic loading. Uh, you can play Gold and Silver on the original Game Boy, but not Crystal. Yeah, I mentioned Crystal uh, requires the Game Boy Color for some reason. You can put the... the crystal into a Game Boy, and it just comes up with a message, and just won't let you continue. Which does suck, but, like, I mean, if it is a requirement, sure. And also, like, I <laughs> I don't think Pokemon Gold is as enjoyable when you don't have the colors. It's really, it's really good fun uh, with that. I'm not too sure if there's any performance, like, because I know the Game Boy Color runs on a 4 megahertz version of the same chip, whereas the Game Boy, the regular Game Boy, runs on a 1 megahertz version. And it's literally just like, the Game Boy Color can just, you know, do four times as many things. Which was a requirement later in its lifespan. Um, but not a requirement for a lot of it. Um, because there's only, there's not that many exclusive Game Boy Color games. The only other one I can think of is Dragon Quest 1 plus 2 and Dragon Quest 3. Um, there's bound to be some other ones. I know that there's a, a, at least a couple dozen, but none that are like that. Not that many. Uh, so this is a weird puzzle. You've got these switches on the wall, and the combination of the switches, three switches, will open different doors. They ditch the project before they finish. I'm searching for leftover loot. I, I think like there are three trainers here. Uh, one of them is a Team Rocket guy, and the others are just like, I'm, I'm just here to steal things, bro. <laughs> uh, I should not have US right here. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm fairly certain that you can store more than 256 8x8 sprites. Because, like, one, there is no way that you're fitting 251 32x32 32 32 Pokemon sprites, sorry, on both sides. Because it's a back sprite as well. 
So Golden Silver has released in 2002, Ruby Sapphire has also been released in 2002. Yeah, I'm, yeah, Korean releases being late is kind of crazy, but it's like how, um, Zelda Ocarina of Time came out on the IQ player in China in 2003, which I, off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure Wind Waker came out that year. And Majora's Mask happened sometime in the middle, in 2000, so... Um, I was not paying attention to those Pokemon. It was coughing, wasn't it? Yeah, I'll just keep going with no one, boy. Uh, it's like Mega Man 6 in Europe. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, like, other games where they were released in a bit of a weird order. I'll always note, uh, Rock Band in Australia being a bit of a weird one where I don't know why it got released a year later in Australia, so instead of competing against Guitar Hero 3 like it did in other regions, it got released against Guitar Hero World Tour, the game that ripped off concepts from Rock Band. So suddenly it was competing against a game that did everything in Rock Band but better. And then Rock Band 2 never came to Australia, so... That's a, that's a fun one. Um, we did get Rock Band 3, and we did get the Beatles Rock Band, and those games actually did come out on time, but... I don't know what was with the first two on that one. That's a bit of a weird one. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones. Um, I know here in Australia as well, we got a few consoles and other kinds of, uh, things before the US. I remember we didn't... we got Pokemon Diamond Pearl a month later. I remember, like, anticipating it a lot after its Japanese release in 2007. And then there was a May release date in America, and then we got, like, late June. <laughs> And that was, that was just like, oh, that hurt, because I chat to people in America, and then it's just like, yep, here's a game I can't play. Cool. I don't know if I downloaded a ROM for it and tried playing it, like, before. I don't think I did. I, I wasn't that desperate, I don't think. Um. Uh, but alternatively, I do know that we got, uh, either it was the DSi or the, it was the 3DS. Yes, it was the... You, your words is hurting Russian hearts. True, I guess Russia does cop it as well, yeah. I do remember getting the 3DS, like, it came out like two days earlier in Australia, and I remember, like, going, Oh, if I make a YouTube video on it now, I'll totally make the big bucks. And then no one saw that video, so... <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, like, this is... This is a fun pattern. We never had po uh, Pokemon games translated. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a big issue and something that, um, I feel very fortunate, I guess, to be in Australia, English speaking, and just, like, English is such a de facto language in so much media, um, so it's great for these kinds of games, like, uh, for film and it's, you know, you'll get, like, subtitles, but for... Video games, it's like, well, I mean, that is the text, and it's also so much text. Uh, I guess books also don't get translated, like, tons often. Like, it happens a lot, but... For the quantity of books. Am I... Am I not... My brain's thinking maybe it's one and three. So, this is... Just one on... And that's open all the, the top ones. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble on this. So three is off, three is now on. So this is one and three. This should open up. I can't go down there, but I can go down here and pick up this one item. Smoke wall. Cool. And then, yeah, I need to figure out how to go down there. But yeah, I can't just go down this way because... Is that so switch one is on so now it's off and that just leaves yeah that leaves this weird like opened up part where that's not quite what I want and then I think the only other one that I haven't checked out is so this is two and three two one three well okay this is this is a path at least fork over your goodies I appreciate how much money these burgles have though got coughing. He knows the goods. I don't think there's an order on these switches. I think it is just, like, having the right combination of on and off. 
Um, so that just means that there's eight possible combinations, and you just kind of run through them and see where you go. Um, oh, really? Fluff has got the PlayStation Network already. Dang it. Anatomy of a Game Boy ROM. Because I, I remember seeing Anatomy of a... Anatomy of a Game Boy Advance one? Not quite. Ray's Anatomy for the Game Boy? Still not quite. <laughs> that's not quite what I'm looking for. Um, I, I know, yeah, there's that one article which is um, Anatomy of an NES ROM. Uh, which is... That's a great way of, like, learning about... Um, just, I guess, like, the way that the... Specifically the INES, like, ROM structure is... Coughing is... <laughs> in this game is terrorist. Oh my gosh, coughing. Jeez. Uh, but yeah, if, if you go to, um... The guy's website is saddesttech.com. If you look up, like, NES ROM quick start, you'll see this guy explain it. And yeah, it's got... Uh, the ROM's got, uh, two... Well, it's got a 16 byte header. Um, it's got, uh... Two PRG banks, and that is uh, the executable code. So each uh, bank is exactly 16 kilobytes, uh, and then CHR blocks, which are character data. Again, uh, all, all of those are eight kilobytes. Um, sprites are inside the CHR bank, um, and there may be an optional 128 bytes afterwards, uh, just for archiving reasons. Um, so Super Mario Brothers has two PRG banks and one CHR bank, so it consists of two of those 16 kilobyte ones and then uh, the 8 kilobyte CHR bank. So that's actually interesting that this PRG bank has, um, or like is 32 kilobytes of the cartridge, but I guess that makes sense because that's, there's nothing down here, they lied to me. That's probably a hidden item, I'm just, you know, poisoned. Um, and, uh, yeah, so if you ever, if you ever curious about your different file sizes of NES ROMs, the way that, uh, games get around, um, using more storage than that is they had a memory controller chip on them that would be told to start pointing to different, um, uh, banks on the, the cartridge instead of being all directly addressable. Um... And uh, that does mean, and this is a fun one about NES emulation, is that different game cartridges can have rather different behavior, and emulators just need to figure that out. They just need to know, hey, this game is going to chuck this kind of controller instruction, or whatever. Um, I believe the INES header does describe the type of controller, so... Um, but yeah, yeah, legit. And, I mean, for for one guy making their own NES games, it doesn't matter, because the NES um, is just going to execute things, and then the microcontroller is going to figure it out. Um, it's a pain for the emulator, because the emulator doesn't have the microcontroller on it, so it needs to emulate what it's, like, hopefully got with the cartridge. Um, and that's one thing that makes uh, disc-based systems, like, incredibly easy to emulate, is because the disc is purely data. There is no extra code, no nothing. Um, I'm pretty sure it's two and three that I need. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, there's no way that you can take a PlayStation and store more... Wait, hold on. I can't go down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, once I heard the Game Boy is really easy to emulate, um, I think the standard is a lot tighter on the Game Boy, so I, I, yeah, I hear it's simpler to emulate. Um, it's not, uh... I mean, it, it still had its, like, growing pain of, like, you know, how do you... How, I guess, do you emulate, but, um... But definitely, yeah, Game Boy emulation was, like, pretty cream of the crop. Uh, what's the uh, Xbox 360, PS3, and Wii? Uh, the Wii is getting really, like, really there. Um, the PS3... Actually, I think all three of those systems are doing okay. I think Xenia's got its, its ways to go for Xbox 360. It's definitely not got a lot of, like, its compatibility is not quite uh, there uh, for every title, but... 
I'm not having a fun time with uh, this this puzzle. Oh, maybe it does. Hmm. This is the worst generation for emulators. Uh, worst generation as in, uh, like, the, the Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. Um, I think the, the bit, like, emulators is a two-part problem. Um, I'm just gonna be trying these Switches for a while, we'll see how this goes. Emulation is a two-part problem, it's like, you need to have at least as simple a technology to drive the, um, you know, to, to allow people to create those emulators, and then you've also got to have as, um, uh, as much demand for it. Um, I think a Switch emulator is decent because I think a lot of people really want to, like, overclock the stuff that's running their games, and so the easiest thing is to emulate it because you can emulate the chip running at a higher clock and therefore, um, just, uh, yeah, it's doing work there. Um, whereas, like, there's no real need to... We have a problem with the Switch? Oh, what's wrong with the Switch? I mean, the Switch, yeah, the Switch is, like, it's not underpowered for its price, but it's definitely one where it's like, yeah, like, we felt the, the limit. You need to get the key from the ROM and the SD. I think the 3DS is the same boat. People figured out the 3DS. Um, Oh, we got a door open, and... Let me like, ask for a key. Yeah, oh, okay. I don't know what I'm doing here, bro. I don't know. The 3DS are not... The 3DS required you to decrypt, um, ROM cartridges, though. Um... And that led to some interesting things where technically you did need the presence of a key in order to decrypt the ROMs, but you didn't need the key actively to, like, play it. Because the emulator didn't care afterwards. Oh, like, I just want that door open. This is worse than the Lieutenant Surge, like, puzzle. I've legitimately just, like, lost on this one. On the Switch you need a key file and the ROM. Okay. But I guess, in theory, like, you can dump that from your actual Switch, and all of these consoles that do have, um... Uh... All these consoles that do- oh my gosh. Uh, all these consoles that do have, um, USB ports or SD cards or really anything, like... Consoles are easier to mod nowadays, so it's bound to be a lot easier to... Um, to at least, like, get the, the means to do that. Um, if anything, actually, I was looking into, um, uh, Xbox modding, and, uh, there's people who are trying to reverse engineer, uh, making an online service, and, uh, it's pretty neat. They've actually, they've got a lot of good progress, but you do need to, like, mod your console. Well, not mod, but you need to get a specific decryption key off your... Decryption? I guess like a, a machine ID off your console, and then you need to be able to register it on their service. Um, and, uh, that's, that's one, um, overhead that prevents people from doing it. Tons normally? I think there's, uh... I can't, I can't recall the way to, to get that key. Um, Nintendo's sad that they can't, uh, have Wi-Fi feature in their emulator. Um, emulation of active consoles is always, um, a bit of an interesting one. Even judge emulator developers. They're- okay, real talk, I do not understand any legal reasons why an emulator shouldn't exist beyond, um, I guess- I guess this is one where, like, yeah, I actually, I take it back. I understand the reason because the US law, um, at least in the, yeah, in the US, specifically states you're not allowed to do reverse engineering for the purposes of circumventing acquisition of software. And 
emulation very often falls into that camp. It's it's a, a dirty truth. People who really enjoy their emulator games don't like admitting to it, but like 100%, it's good to live in Pirate Country. I mean, yeah, like... Like, I, I enjoy playing these for archival reasons. I enjoy just the idea that like, you know, so many of these games and even old versions of games don't fall to, you know, loss of time. Like, um, I think I, I, I played a perfect example of one recently, uh, where I played a F1 2013. And they've got licensing issues, so you can't play Codemasters uh, F1 2010 and 2013 games. But the 2013 game legitimately has a DLC where you can play four tracks, uh, classic tracks with classic cars with uh, Murray Walker like commentating it, and it's like it's um, like amazingly vintage and you know a piece of history. And you know Murray Walker's not with us anymore, and it's like you know what's the you know like that that would just get lost to history if people were not like freely distributing that around the internet and people were kind of you know turning the blind eye to this piece of copyrighted material because it's like one you know this yeah this acquisition of a copyrighted material but it's also like you know who's enforcing it we were grieving over the death of the ukrainian uh who distributed games on torrent oh dude freaking oh my condolences on that one um I don't really know, like, and granted, I probably don't want to, like, stick my name on, like, distributing content or anything. Like, I'll just kind of say, hey, you know, like, what's a, what's a classic example? Like, MAME is a, is a classic example where it's like, they update the emulator for compatibility and then it just so happens to be someone releasing uh, a lot of the ROMs that are able to run on, um, on the MAME emulator. And, like... Yeah, like, I, for, for things that old, it should, like, sorry, not, not that things should go loose, but, uh, they're legit, I'm sorry, I'm just holding down too much, um, there legitimately should be things in place to prevent people from holding their games for too long, damn, it's hard to talk with another human can get your demonetization for, um, Uh, do, do you mean demonetization or, like, demonization? Like, I guess demonetization is what I would get if I talked about piracy a ton on YouTube, but I feel like there's a, there's a certain degree of, like, I mean, you can talk about it and then just go, like, bottom line, uh, don't steal things, wink wink, like, you know, it's, it's, it's your downloading things off the internet, so just... You know, don't, don't skirt actual sales. That's all I'll say. That's, that's my bottom line. Like, I don't like, I used to, like, for brief bits. And then it's just like, eh, I mean, I only now got what I just said. Uh, yeah. But I, if you meant demonization where people would like, you know, go like, oh, how dare you, you know, pirate stuff. Like, you know, that's a principle. I'm not like, you know, I'm not pirating like a brand new, you know, like game that just came out. Like, you know, when uh, I remember Doom 2016 came out and then people complained that it had the de novo anti-cheat on it. Uh, You're not going any farther. I don't show mercy to my enemies, not even brats. That reminds me as well that um, a lot of Game Boy games released the exact same uh, like ROM on uh, both uh, the US and um, European. Um, versions and by extension Australia and it's just kind of interesting because like yeah you said father and it's like no one would they'd write further it'd take the same amount of space you just fix the A and turn into a U but yeah that's a fun one um, but yeah no like I I do feel like piracy is um, oddly taboo because it's like you know like it's it's pretty obvious that like emulation has existed for decades now like bleem existed and i think if if bleem like if bleem exists we should be able to talk about running games on the wrong system someone made like sold it quartz defended it 
Like, the only reason why Blame stopped doing it is because they lost so much money being in court that they, you know, they just ran out. They were just like, that's it, we're done. I don't know why I went with Chicky on this one. This is not a Chicky opponent. Uh, to the... Ah, no, stop it. We'll commit. We'll commit. <laughs> commit the piece. Uh, damn, it's like piracy for them to know a play if you pirate NES game from 2020. Well, okay, th this is the other tough thing, though, and I 100% agree with the law on this one, where, like, yes, these companies do own the intellectual property of these materials, and do have and have shown that they do re-release various old games in various means. Uh, I say that in in like those specific terms because it's like yes, Nintendo does release Super Mario Brothers on other platforms and do charge you money for it, and therefore you having downloaded a version of Super Mario Brothers probably will often lead into a lost sale for them. Yeah, like, that's, that is like, yeah, sure, but it's also like, I mean, I guess it's like, you know, availability is a classic as well. And, and I guess, like, and this is something, um, that I don't think the lore is particularly clear on. What about games that did not get a new release? Yeah, a lot of games don't get a new release, and there's a lot of games, for example, uh, and I'll, I'll say a classic example, I played Earthbound on my YouTube channel back in 2008. Australia and Europe never got Earthbound released until 2014 on the Wii U specifically. And now today, you cannot buy a Wii U. So, for a period of time, yeah, the game was available, but now it's like, if I want to play Earthbound now, uh, it was not on the, the NES Mini or the SNES Mini. Um, it was, it was not on either of those, I believe. Oh, it might have been on the SNES, but... That was after the Wii U release, and even then, the SNES Mini is not readily available, um... Okay, alright, so it, if it was, then it was on two platforms. But they were both around the same time, and you both- you can't buy them in the store right now. Like, that's a big problem with software, is that it becomes really unavailable. Like, really quick. PC? Fair game. PC is, like, a very safe platform. It's like, if you release something on PC, you can 100% guarantee that that is, like, just gonna last. Um, like, the only games for PC were for 16-bit, um, you know, operating systems and, and stuff. Uh, like, th those are games that don't necessarily run natively nowadays on computers. But anything intending for Windows 95? Uh, granted, you do not find them anywhere. I, I have not seen anyone... Like, the oldest game I've seen on a store shelf is maybe, like... Not even, like, Half-Life 2. I'm trying to think, like... I think I've seen a shelf copy of Doom 3 once. Oh, you can't even get back out? Oh, emergency. Oh, there you go. Maybe I should have turned that on last time. Oh. Uh, but... But, yeah. I, alternatively, yeah, like... Yeah... We can talk about the idea of a lost sale. Uh, we have a SNES Mini where we're porting Pirate Number 2 Doom in 69 time. Ooh. Doom gets a lot of love. And I, I think Doom is actually, like, the perfect example of a eternally preserved game. Doom, like, not only the fact that it came out 28 years ago, and I'm still playing, you know, people's custom mapping projects for that game, but also just the fact that, like, it's so... Well, like, it, you know, it, they open source the engine, first of all. Uh, they thought really well in advance on the modding scene and turning it into a one-file solution, which is incredibly, like, easy to pirate. Like, legitimately, it, it's a game where the engine code is open source, you can build it, you can make it, people have done whatever the heck they've done to it, they have things that run WAD files, and there is one singular WAD file that is Doom 1. One singular WAD file that is Doom 2. Like... It, it's an amazingly easy to pirate game. And yet, and yet, it still sells. That should 100% tell these companies that like... 
you beat piracy by providing the easiest means to buy your products. Nintendo's in a tough one. They release all their games on their console, so when their console uh, already started, don't starve, bro. If you if you gotta eat, you gotta eat. So don't worry. I, I'm gonna be ranting. You can catch me ranting on YouTube. Like I'll upload the vod. You can just hear the rest of it if you if you want. Have a good meal. Um, but yeah, like y you beat your piracy by providing a you know not a not necessarily a better service because I think Doom. Uh, like, Doom's in a bit of a weird boat where it's like, yeah, like, most third-party things are better. I think Bethesda's new version is pretty alright. They've done a great, great step into, one, unifying it for consoles, which I think is great, but also just, you know, providing that custom content because all the other, like, versions of Doom kept forgetting that, hey, Doom is intended for a single computer to be able to run a bunch of random, like, you know, texture packs and stuff. That, that's what it was there for. There's a bunch of console versions that I do agree, it's Doom minus the custom content, but uh, I think that's more just, you know, market for a thing. But Doom on PC? Like, for the longest time it was just DOSBox. Um, and uh, that's a very weird way of playing the game. In fact, there's actually, there's bound to be a few other games like that, where it's like, you can buy it on a storefront, but you do definitely get, um, a rather inferior version. Um, I guess that's something to, to note. Uh, I'm gonna be going until the end of this um, dungeon, which should take a bit longer. I'm definitely gonna be going a bit beyond the, the 10 30 p.m. mark, but I do I do want to rant about the uh, emulation just a little bit more. Um, so yeah, I. This is an interesting dilemma, and I want to, like, pitch the question to everyone else. What do you do, like... Legally, yeah, you're not supposed to distribute games if you don't have, you know, you don't have the intellectual property. This is a very weak wheezing. In fact, some of these Pokemon are quite weak. None of the ones, like, leading on are going to be, like, above level 30 until we get to, uh, air quotes, boss, uh, trainers. Um... But yeah, so if a game is... Yeah, you're not allowed to d distribute a game because you don't own the rights to it. Yeah, 100%. And obviously, there's a lot of end-user license agreement that goes, Yeah, please, really don't share this. Um, but I'm curious, like, you know, what, what are the... Like, reasons why a game would be kept private like that? How'd you get this far? I guess it can't be helped. I'll dispose of you. What, yeah, what exactly prevents, like... I don't know how I'm actually phrasing, because I was gonna say, like, everything is kind of like, yeah, like, there's a copyright law, and you distributing something is obviously just breaching the copyright law regardless. But I guess there's the moral dilemma of going, okay, well, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to do copyright infringement because, um... Uh, because, yeah, there is the potential that it is going to be resold in some way, and that will result in a lost sale. And yeah, I, like, I think that is the moral to, to end up at that point. But I guess the question is, how do you predict it? And what happens if a game goes in and out of production again? Because the tough part about, like, film is that, like, or, like, music formats are generally very overlapping and very, like, long-term. Like, I guess cassettes have worn out, and there are, um, cassette, like... I, 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 I don't know of any cassette-only albums off the top of my head. I'm, I'm thinking, uh, John Anderson's, um, uh, animation was an album that came out on cassette in 82 and then, like, was so poorly transferred onto CD in 2007. I have five minutes and also you streaming a game that can still be purchased. Um, yeah, you, you can purchase this game on the 3DS. If you own a 3DS, you can still purchase this game. So I guess it's that. Um, gosh, I'm in a bit of a weird spot here. I don't know where I'm going on this one. Uh... But yeah, like, uh, for the film, I remember when VHS 
started being surpassed by DVD, there was like a five year like overlap to like transfer your stuff to DVD. And even then, it's not hard finding a cassette player. Sorry, I, well, yeah, well, cassette player, yes. Um, this is a problem with copyright. Uh, there's definitely, yeah, there is, there is a big problem with copyright, um, because the, I guess, the intellectual property should last a while. Yes, I 100% agree with that. But I guess the question is, is that, like, also, finally, wing attack. This is, this is an attack I've been waiting so long for, because now, who needs supersonic? You don't need two confusion attacks, you just need one. That's all you need. Thank you, Rocket Front. But, I, yeah, I think the biggest problem when it comes to video games for copyright is... Well, not cro uh, copyright, but... Oh, you came to me? Thank you. The Radio Tower! What's happening there? Taken over by Team Rocket. Here, take this card key. Oh, okay. Use that to open the shutters on 3F. I'm begging you to help. There's no telling what they'd do if they control the transmitter. You may be able to control Pokemon using a special signal. You're the only one I can trust. Please save the radio tower and all the Pokemon nationwide do the entirety of Japan is, you know, at the mercy of this. Uh, this is sleep talk. This is a very, very, uh, situational move. It might be nice on my, uh, rest chuckle. Uh, go up a floor, by the way, and you're at the bottom of the, um, uh, of the department store. The amulet coin's a fun, uh, item where if your Pokemon has it and they're out, Hey kid, you're holding us up. Boss, here's a work behind the scenes where no one can see us. Um, that doubles the money you get, so... Yeah, I, I feel like copyright in video games is really annoying to an end consumer because games and software in general are like, their compatibility goes way out the window. Like, legit, a game... I mean, any, any video game is going to be in copyright for at least, like, 50 years after publication. Um, we might be starting to get into that point where games, like, on the Odyssey, like, they'll start, you know, falling out of copyright. But, it's like, who can play any of that? Thanks to, oh, yeah, yeah, Dis Disney are a perfect example of just, like, you know, <laughs> why it's a bit of a corrupt system on that one, but, like, who can play a game on the Odyssey 2? Who owns an Odyssey 2 and it's like, oh, you know what's great? Me being able to get these games. It's like, most... In fact, I don't think anyone is able to, like, print chips for the Odyssey 2 like that. Like... So anyway, you head up to the third floor. You go to the key card. You got your key card. And now, you can continue finding some more things. It'll, uh, it's his fault for his length. Uh, isn't it 80 plus years after you die? I don't know what it's- what it is in terms of, like, corporate, because... Uh, like, who owns... Like, Pokemon? Disney keep extending it? Um, Disney- yeah, Disney has extended it. So they've extended it to, like, 120 years after, um... Or something is, like, 120 years, so, like... I think, like, Sleeping Beauty is legit, like, that's not coming out of copyright until, like, another 30 years. Unless they change it again, or something like that. Uh, I, I don't know what it's like uh, for, um, yeah, for video games, because, like, who owns the video game? It would be the, the publisher, maybe a producer, maybe. But, um... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Oh, that's a... That's a going coffin. He's going. I'm trying to get Fluffer up to level 30. It's not happening that quickly. And it's probably not going to happen this part, unfortunately. Because he's, he's going to evolve at level 30. I'm also surprised Golbat still hasn't evolved at level 30, but... Uh... Let's send... Chicky is just, like, there's too many poison types. Too many poison flyings. Can't do anything about it. I was just saying coughing. Sorry, I got that. Stop! I'm known as the Team Rocket Fortress. You're not taking another step. That's a... That's a line of dialogue. Oh, this guy's got the gold back. Imagine a situation where your only your grandsons could play red and blue without more problems. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's another one as well. Is that like games are simultaneously easier and harder to get? I think they're easier um, 
to get into- oh, I don't have Fluff Ocean, yeah, never mind. Um, <laughs> they're easier to acquire, but they're harder to run because of things like online uh, DRM systems, uh, just over-reliance on online mechanisms in general. Ooh, this is... This guy is really meaning business right now. I mean, Grant, this is a level 36 gold bat. They started to ramp up. Remember the gym battle that I had earlier? He only went up to level 31. Granted, Jasmine at the end of the at the beginning of the last stream was uh, had a level 35 Steelix, but I think you know how that went out. That wasn't too bad. Go, Noam boy. He has been bitten. He has been blessed with the bite of 87. Uh, but yeah, like, I... I guess the thing is that back in the day, like, you couldn't really... I mean, yeah, a, a game was a game. No online system, it's like, it ran on that box, and yeah, really, you just need to be able to duplicate the thing that runs on the box. Uh, sometimes, just by substituting the game and running on the system, or doing both, because most people don't run games. That's, that's a bit of a dirty truth, but I don't think many people run games uh, into emulators um, very often. Like, uh, I, I know Retroarch supports just reading off a CD, like the thing in your CD drive and just going off that, but uh, it doesn't, um, I don't imagine tons of people use it. I think a lot of people just still go with the file only system. Which is, yeah, it's not, it's not at all the direct way to play it, and the only legal way that you could be acquiring these is if you owned a cartridge of the game and you owned a specific port that would let you dump that cartridge, but... Wing Attack is gonna be good fun. Like, finally, here's a... Stab. Decent, like, really good, uh, physical attack. Start sweeping enemies. That's what you need. Ekans. So, but yeah, I, I'm curious about games, because we are in this age of remakes and re-ports and whatever, and it's like, you know, do do we archive, well, archiving is always a, a classic, like, you know, there should be distributions of these games out there, because they will not last forever. There's, I mean, my copy of Pokemon Gold, the battery has not worked in it for, like, 12 years. It's just, like, it's a nature of, you know, the diminishing media. Diminishing media? The, um, you know, the, the physical medium of the game will not last forever. It gets used. It can't really be transferred. It's not intended for that. Um, so doing a transfer is effectively like, yeah, that is going to preserve the game. And fortunately with the age of emulation, at the very least, Pokemon is not going to exist and it's, a, sorry, Meowth, help me. Ah, I'm in the corner. Ah, uh, there's gonna be two guys on the top who are absolutely going to wreck me, so let's let's do a one last heal and save, because you do have to fight him back to back. Um but Yeah, I I don't know. I emulation's a an interesting topic, because it's like you know, you you wanna you wanna operate legally, hundred percent, but you do wanna know Well not know, but like I don't, I don't want games to be, like, lost in the medium. You know, lo lost because, hey, here's a, like, I, I'm a proud owner of Dark Spore. I always keep saying that. I'm a proud owner of a game that came out ten years ago, and I have not been able to play for five years because the server shut off immediately. Like, after five years. I'm also the proud owner of Battleborn. I have never played Battleborn. I'm the proud owner of it on Steam. But I can't play it. I, can, I, guess, I think I can play the single player. I'm not too sure if I can actually play it. But I know I'm not going to be able to play any of that multiplayer that, like, anyone made. And... Not at this point, but I think we'll get to a point where, like, uh, Neural Nets will at least help substitute the player count on some of these games. And as long as people can figure out how to, like, reverse network code, that should be okay. Um, as long as TLS doesn't get in the way, you know. Uh, so I'm just going to save right here, because I know that this fight is going to, like, kick my butt quite a bit. Or rather both these fights, because this is gonna definitely get me. I think you can actually fight them one after the other as well if I really wanted to, but we'll go with that, so. I don't know, uh, 
maybe I'm talking a bit pragmatically, but that's my feelings. I don't really, um... Like, there's a, there's a place for it, so... Anyways, that's that. Uh, as a true gamer, I can eat and sit at computer. Exactly, you're a multitasker. That's what, that's what gamers are all about. Gamers are all about thinking and acting at the same time. Alright, so this is yet another Team Rocket executive. They start off with a Arbok here. It's female! By the way, all of this person's Pokemon are female. I actually wonder, that's... is that a thing? That actually might be a thing, is that the Team Rocket Pokemon are all the same gender as that Team Rocket person, because there's been two female Team Rocket members on the way up here, and they've had female-only Pokemon. That's actually kind of neat. That is pretty neat. I actually wonder if that's a thing with everyone, whether all their Pokemon are just the same gender as them. It's definitely been the case these past two hours. So, who knows? Anyway, they got Murkrow now. Uh, we got the plus. Uh, I'm gonna send a Flaffer on this one. Uh, so, for reference, that Arbok, uh, not too bad. He knows Glare, Bite, Wrap, Poison Sting. Pretty weak attacks. Uh, this Murkrow uh, does know uh, Peck, Haze, Pursuit, and Nightshade. Nightshade is gonna be a bit of a meme attack. It's gonna do a fair bit of damage, but... Uh, if you can take out the Murkrow quick, shouldn't be too bad. I wish I had a better electric type attack. I really do, but... Ah, eh, that's okay. Nightshade, don't do that. There we go. Good stuff. Really good stuff. And then, uh... Yeah, in theory I could be using Golbat here. Let's do it. <laughs> Hot Dog Guy's got the experience here, he doesn't need to go out. So, see ya. Uh, this Vile Plume does have, wanna hear meme, Dragons in Gen 1. Oh, Ghost Types in Gen 1. Although Dragons in first 1 is a good meme, because the one Dragon type attack is a fixed damage move. It's just like, oh, okay, sure. There's a lot of, like, games where it's like, yeah, they'll have a weird mechanic. Um, here and there. Actually, uh, yeah, just... While I was on the topic of Nino Kuni, um, I was going for the achievement, which required capturing or taming 250 kind species of, of monsters, and uh, in doing so, you have to use the the stone evolution equivalent in that game. And the stone evolution depends on the the type of monster, so they're either of type sun, star, moon, or planet. I got that achievement. There are only like 400 total monsters. Oh, you managed to get this far. You must be quite the trainer. We intend to take over this radio station and announce our comeback. That should bring our boss Giovanni back from his solo training. We are going to regain our former glory. I won't allow you to interfere with our plans. Uh, hiding double equal sign uh, solo training. Yeah, okay. So we got another executive here. Um, this guy's starting to up the ante, so he's got a level 33 Houndour. Not too bad, to be honest. Um, he's got Feint Attack, Ember, Bite, and Roar. Uh, I'm worried Roar's gonna catch me out here, but that's okay. Alright, he's going on with Ember. He's going on with Ember. Uh, as a kid, I thought every Pokemon can evolve with a stone. Uh, I mean... Yeah, like, I, I guess, yeah, you play Nino Kuni. Every Pokemon or every monster in that game is a stone evolution. Um, you gain, you increase their level to a certain point, then it says they're metamorphable, and then they all evolve uh, into one form directly with a basic stone matching their type. And then uh, they start at level one again, they go up uh, again to a certain point, and then you get to use a super stone, or whatever the term was, a jumbo stone of that type, and you get a choice of taking them the two ways. So imagine Blossom, except the first one is also a stone evolution, and you gotta do this weird stone evolution. So imagine Blossom or Vileplume, like that kind of choice. Um, uh, this is Houndoom, by the way. He knows Fan Attack, Amber, Bite, and Smog. That's right, three of the same attacks, and yeah. It is an evolution, and Houndoom is probably gonna take two hits, because Houndoom is uh, a bit bulky, but I don't imagine he's gonna absolutely tank. Whoa! Oh, no! No! Come on, I was there! 
Oh, okay. Well, here's a question. Who would I send in afterwards? I feel like Babat is probably my best bet. Um, yeah, I don't think he's got anything to really take on Babat, so... Okay, there. Let's kick him with the wing attack. He's fast, isn't he? Really fast, this Houndoom. My brain and ten, you want Gloom? You need Stone to do this early. Yeah, I mean... To be honest, like... And First Gen Pokemon does have some weird translations here and there, so I... Feel like it's perfectly fine to have that understanding at some point. Babak grew to level 31. Will he evolve? We'll see, after the battle. Hot Dog is also 31. He's not evolving, he, he needs a stone. Um, Alright, and last one, he's got a coughing. It's probably not as bad as the Houndoom. Um, we're going with the Juicer! Yeah! Alright, so this guy, he knows Sludge, Smokescreen, Tackle, and Haze. I don't think he has any plan for dealing with the juicer here, but neither do I. So, we're prolonging the inevitable. Oh boy. Uh, didn't know English at the time. I guess when I played Pokemon way back in the day, I didn't really know English, but, uh, I, I got there, because, uh, I, I was just too young, so Pokemon was kind of like my way of uh, kind of learning English, or at least learning patterns with the English. Like, I'd see a word, and then I'd be able to go, oh, it's, it's like that. Um, and, you know, I see super effective, and I go, ah, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, dude, oh, exactly. How's Bulbapedia on the non-English front? I feel like Bulbapedia gets a lot of English love, and then I'm not too sure how it, how it works on any other language. Uh, rap is pretty nice as well, because I don't have to, like, keep stacking rap. It's, it's one of those just, like, persist damage, and I don't know if it's continuing to do more damage, but it's definitely nice in that regard. Haze is the exact same animation, but on both people. All stat changes for Eliminate. Oh, the chat messages just died off. Uh, you just said, uh, wait, we have other Bulbapedia languages. I, I'm not too sure if Bulbapedia, um, like, as in someone has to write the page for those other languages. So... I can imagine, like, with Wikipedia, um, you know, like, a lot of pages are in English, but it's like, I, I have come across some things where it's like, they're only in Spanish. I've come across some things where they're only in sim simple English. Um, only what I know Russia have anime, f uh, for anime. Sorry. Only what I know Russia have wiki for anime. Um, yeah. The anime seems kind of big in Russia, isn't it? So, that's... Not surprising, but it's also like, it is kind of neat. I like it. Gosh, the juicer is definitely, if there's one thing the juicer is good at, he's making a, a two minute fight take ten minutes. Almost stopped after XY. Oh, it almost stopped after XY. Yep, he's definitely, he's definitely going on that front. Thank you, Juicer. You know what's actually kind of weird? I don't think I've had a single wild Pokemon come up this stream. It's been all... Ice-type gym leaders, gym trainers, and Team Rocket, and the rival. And that's it. That's an amazing, like, amount of time that you got to spend on this bit. Like, this is, yeah, stream 7. It a trap! But yeah, no, that's, uh, that's, like, crazy that, um... You know, just, like, the pacing is just like, hey, let's just go entirely on these set encounters, because... Also, we need to get the player a bit above level 30 before they fight the last gym in the game. Air quotes, I know. Well, I, I can safely say the Juicer is really good at attacking one guy, and he definitely needs a stronger attack. Like, Rap is a bit of a meme, but, like, the Juicer is able to tank whatever the heck this Goffing is throwing at him. Imagine in the next stream, the whole stream is just wild Pokemon. Oh, it probably is a lot of wild Pokemon. Um, I... Hopefully plan to at least do the the next 
uh, gym fight. Um, I, like, I don't imagine, uh, it'll take that long. I, like, it's, we've got one cave. We've got the ice path. The ice path is not that long. It's pretty short. Uh, and then, yeah, you're in the last city. Fight a gym. I'd imagine that wouldn't even happen at the end of the part. Um, and then work your way south, and then just away you go. There's some other things I, d I would like to, um, let's hint at something at the end of this one. Uh, farewell! Whoosh. Here comes this fella. He's coming in. Oh, Vienna, thank you. Your courageous actions have saved Pokemon nationwide. I know it's not much, but please take this. And he gives you the rainbow wing, or if you're playing silver, he'll give you the silver wing. Uh, does he tell you what it is? There used to be a tower right here in Goldenrod City, but it was old and creaky. So we replaced it with our radio tower. We, we destroyed a national landmark to build a radio tower. The radio tower has become a landmark, but eh. during the teardown, we found that at the top. I heard that giant Pokemon used to fly over Goldenrod in the past. Maybe that fell off a Pokemon. Maybe like the one that appears at Tin Tower in Ecrutic City. Okay, I better go to my office. See ya. So, yeah, so what this item is, uh, depending on your version of the game, you will be able to catch the legendary on the box of your game. So in our case, we'll be able to catch Ho-Ho, which I will do at the beginning of the next stream. Uh, if you've got Pokemon Gold, uh, oh, the Russian wiki's still up? Sweet. Alright. Take solace that the Russian wiki is still going there, so you know people are doing good work. Um, but yeah, we can we can catch the, the legendary. Um, yeah, if I've got... In Pokemon Gold, that is just in Ecrutique City. So just north, you can go get ho easily. If you've got Silver, you'll get that Silver Wing, and then you have to go all the way to the Whirlpool Islands, which is between Cyanwood and... Uh, and Olivine, and it's a little bit awkward to, to get there, um, because you need Whirlpool, and it's, it's not fun. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can, you can get the Legendary, and it's probably a fair bit overleveled for what I even need, so, who knows. Uh, they have a lot of empty space on the 4th to 7th generation. Oh, yeah, I, I guess that makes sense. Um, yeah. But the, the older stuff is easier to not only, like, translate over, but also, um, just understand as well. It did not exit. It did not exit. Oh, I'll, I'll exist. Yeah, jeez, weird. I wonder, yeah, I wonder how Russian releases on Pokemon has been. Uh, but anyway, I will end it there for now. That has been a great stream and a great chat. Um, so with that, I would like to thank you all for watching. Uh, you don't have Pokemon, so, oh, that sucks. Nintendo, Nintendo, you gotta make, you gotta make Pokemon available in Russia. You gotta do it. Um, so yeah, so thank, thank you all for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this, just follow. I'm streaming at the same time every time, uh, every week. Um, all of these VODs end up on YouTube, so you can also subscribe to my YouTube if you like watching them in the comfort of your own home, uh, or at your own pace. Um, I will pretty much be just sitting here for another 166 hours until it's Monday again, but that's okay. Um, yeah, no, it's good to just, yeah, continue going, having these productive streams, and I really am enjoying, like, just, yeah, chatting to you guys and have a good time, so, yeah, no, have a, have a good week, everyone, stay safe, eat your greens, uh, and, uh, I don't know, dip everything in aioli. That sounds healthy. <laughs> Alright, have a good one, everyone.